I still here? Has it happened? Oh, what's going on? It's the 12th of July, 1999, and I'm unable to answer all of those questions. My body and mind have all but shut down. My energy wiped out. I am numb. I am empty. My once resilient spirit is now completely broken. I'm not even sure if I'm alive or dead. Let me tell you where we are. We're in the galley of a prawn trawler out of the Coral Sea between Australia and Papua New Guinea. We share this trawler with three Australian crew members. To get here, I lied about having fishing experience. I thought it'd be a really cool six-week backpacking adventure. And it was. Well, it was until the night that we almost sank. On a stormy night, one of the two booms of the trawler broke loose. Our efforts to salvage the fishing gear while capsizing went really badly wrong for us. In a last ditch attempt to save the boat, myself and the skipper went out onto the boom. My job was to bear hug him onto the boom so we could cut the cable faster with both of his hands. Now, while we were out there, we were mostly submerged under the waves. However, drowning, that was the least of our worries. A school of hungry sharks had gathered between us and the trawler. So at any moment, one curious bite, followed by the smell of blood, well, it could have been fatal for both of us. We were like meat hanging on a skewer. It seemed like an eternity, but finally, the cable snapped, and we got back a level of buoyancy. Did I get the adventure I was looking for? Oh, you bet I did. However, that crazy night was nothing compared to what was to come next. A few days later, back out at sea, myself and the skipper got into a drunken mess fight. He won the second round, but I ended up on the deck with two broken ribs. The pain was instant. Now, working on a prawn trawler is really manual work, and as a result, I couldn't do the jobs I was supposed to do. So eventually, after a lot of intimidation and abuse from the skipper, he finally agreed I could catch a lift on the mothership back to mainland Australia in a few days' time. When the morning came for me to leave, the drunken skipper, he fronted up to me and he said, you have three choices. You can come out on the deck and fight me and I'll send you home piece by piece. You can swim to that mothership or you can stay right here, mate. I had no choice. I had to stay. The crew considered me a traitor for wanting to leave. And later that evening, the first mate said to me, we're going back to regular rotas, and if you don't do every single job that you're asked to do, a bunch of fives will be waiting for you. Now, most people can walk away from that kind of intimidation and bullying, and I would highly recommend that you do. However, I was stuck out at sea. What could I do? What would you do? Let me tell you what I did. I decided to take sides with my pride, my stubbornness, and my ego, because as far as I was concerned, these guys were doing me wrong. And I figured, with just 18 days left to go, broken ribs or not, they're not going to lay a finger on me. 
do your worst, boys. I can take it. That mentality would prove to be a turning point for my mental health. The mood on the trawler was toxic. The skipper gave us an extra two hour long job in the morning cooking prawns. Now this added to their value, but it subtracted away from precious sleeping time. The boys gave me extra jobs, such as painting the boat and spending more time on the trinet at night. This was a bit of gameplay by them just to push my buttons. But I resentfully did what they asked. However, it was impossible for me to ignore the pain in my ribs, which was now affecting my limited sleeping time. Day by day, my energy was decreasing. My mental energy and my physical energy was just draining from me. Then, with just eight days left to go, the realization hit me. I'm not going to be able to see this out to the end. I became despondent and my mind slipped into a very, very dark place. So now you're up to date on my mental health status here in the galley of the trawler. I'm completely depressed. I'm practically immobile with exhaustion and pain. And I'm probably out of my rational mind. Yet even still, I hold dear this crazy notion that I'm winning some battle against my tormentors. It's a pointless victory for my pride my stubbornness and my ego. Okay. Let's all go together from here and see where this story takes us. By the way, when I say from here, I don't mean in a physical sense. Red dots on carpets, galleys and trawlers, they're all just places. I mean, let's explore my vulnerable mindset. Explore the thoughts and emotions of someone who is suicidal and just can't figure a way out. Now, for some of you, I know this might be a little bit uncomfortable, but please know that you're in a safe place. We'll go on this journey together. Get up, Owen. Get up now and go. Do it. Go before you fall asleep again. I would obey my order, except I'm now feeling conflicted. That earlier sense of euphoria that my pending suicide was giving me, it's now since abandoned me. And I need that euphoria back to help me get up off this seat because I still crave for a taste of happiness, stillness, and peace. But there's a very thin thread of emotions holding me back. It's a feeling of sadness for my wasted potential. I'll die without anybody ever seeing my worth, without me even seeing it. There's things I want to do and things that I want to experience. But there's just so many of them. I wish I could hold on to just one thought, one thing to pull me back, to make me change my mind. But I, I 
I just can't concentrate. I'm too far gone. I can feel the emotions rising in me. I want to cry out loud, but I don't want to make any noise. I'm just too proud still to show any weakness. Then I do something I hadn't done up to this point. I speak. I speak to God. I speak to the universe. I speak to you. And this is what I say. God, I'm about to do something that I really don't want to do. I'm about to do something that's going to change my life forever, but not in a good way. If you help me, I promise I will help other people. I'll be useful. I just need a break from this. I don't want to die. Please. No doubt, God would agree with my views and my potential. However, I wouldn't be the first person to leave this planet unfulfilled. I had my chance, I guess. Thanks for listening. The calm, dark waters beyond the trawler lights seem so inviting. I can feel my euphoria returning. I better go now. What's that? I think I can hear the skipper shouting out in the deck. Or maybe I'm hallucinating. Next thing, the door of the galley bursts open and the skipper lunges towards me, shouting, What have you done with the trinet? I, I, I haven't done anything with the trinet. And seemingly I've done nothing with myself either. The pressure of his hands against my neck tells me I'm still here and I'm still breathing. Luckily for me, the crew come up and he lets go. We all go outside to see what had happened. As I was preparing myself to take my last walk, a splice in the wire of the trinet broke loose and it fell into the sea. It was gone. The trinet had become my biggest tormentor, causing me the most sleep deprivation. I would now get an extra two hours sleep every single night. Now, this is either a crazy bit of luck or a miracle. I let you guys decide. But I took it as a sign for me to recover. And I am so, so, so grateful to be here to share this story with you. So what do we all know now? Well, we know that working on a prawn trawler ain't no pleasure cruise. In my case, I learned a lesson that could have been fatal. My decision to take sides with my pride, stubbornness, and ego became a powerful force for self-destruction, leaving me with little or no room to maneuver. It cut off my ability to speak out. It cut off my ability to ask for help. It isolated me. And as soon as the energy drained out of my body, my mind went into free fall. So I'm asking you, please, watch out for these signs in your own life or someone you know. 
And let's be kind to other people. Because for all we know, a bit of fun at their expense, it just might be more than they can handle. Before I go, do you remember when I said, when I spoke on the trawler, I said I'd help people and be useful? Well, recently, I just sold a very successful sports events business that I started from scratch that's helped over 100,000 people achieve their sporting goals. I'm the author of two books, and I currently work as a wellness coach. In terms of experiences, I've had many amazing experiences. But there's one standout one. And that was completing the Marathon de Sable, the world's toughest race in the Sahara Desert. So why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this in case you need to know that there is a way back from rock bottom. What happened on the trawler does not define me. I have healed and I've taken ownership of my life. And I have absolutely no doubt, no doubt whatsoever, that if I can do that, then so can you.